Hello, this is Jim Kitzmiller, and uh, today we're going to talk about e-learning and how e-learning can help you reach your goals. And we're going to also talk about what it is and uh, help you get a better understanding of it. And we're going to also talk about how e-learning courses are put together and uh, the various standards that exist for e-learning courses. So the intended audience for this course includes managers because you, you want to be sure your employees are most capable of producing on the job and uh, being safe and acting uh, appropriately and so forth. So e-learning is excellent for that and this e-learning uh, module we have right here will, will help you understand the whole e-learning um, process much better. And also, this is for teachers and trainers. You may want to create courses yourself, or you may want to bring in courses that have already been created and add that to your curriculum. So first of all, we'll talk about what e-learning is. I'm going to read this. Uh, e-learning is the use of computers to create and deliver educational material to customers, prospects, employees and students. I first encountered um, e-learning back in the 50s or 60s. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Omar Moore who had uh, done a lot of research into e-learning and he, um, uh, amongst other things, was into the idea of um, um, taking different learning paths depending on uh, what students knew and did not know. So, for example, if the students did not know an uh, answer to a particular question, then the e-learning course would um, uh, take the student on a different path that would answer that, that the one question and expanded upon what the person needed to know. So, Anyway, this is more about what you'll learn. You'll learn how e-learning can help you achieve your goals. And the agenda for this course, what you're going to learn is where e-learning fits into the big picture, how it helps you bridge the gap from where you are to where, where you'd like to be and, and the advantages. And this is going to be a fairly short video, so you don't necessarily need to get popcorn unless you really like popcorn. So here's more on bridging the gap from the current scene to a better scene. In other words, it helps us get from where we are to where we want to be. Now, of course, e-learning is not the total solutions for uh, any of these things except for learning or education itself, but it applies to different areas in life. For example, if we have uh, sales at a certain level and we'd like them to be higher, e-learning courses that helps the salespeople understand about selling or about the product will actually help bridge that gap from the current sales to more sales. And also, if someone has a current ability in any area, and sales is one of them, but uh, just about any area at all, a uh, well-designed e-learning course with the proper materials presented in the proper way uh, could actually increase someone's ability. And in addition to that, there's productivity. There's an e-learning course can actually help uh, someone raise their current productivity to a more desired level of productivity. I uh, studied an e-learning course that was put together by a management consulting company back in the 1970s. And I applied it back then, and I noticed an enormous increase in my productivity. And I just recently resumed those kind of activities and am again noticing a, a significant increase in productivity. And also with creativity, there can be an e-learning course for creativity, just like there can be an e-learning course for productivity. So, uh, and there is definitely 
information and exercises that can be presented to people um, to increase their creativity to a higher level. And also there uh, can be an e-learning course on stress. I'm actually planning to do that, to create an e-learning course that will help people get from a state of stress and get to a state of inner peace. So er, learning as we know it uh, in uh, uh, here in modern culture uh, started with a little red schoolhouse. And it's come quite a way since then. And we're going to take a look at the modern education methods. Now face-to-face -face is a standard method from the little red schoolhouse, but it's still in use today and it's going to be in use forever. And the electronic version of face-to-face -face is uh, going through the web with a webcam and uh, conversing two ways to people or possibly one person talking to many people. And e-learning encompasses that in addition to many other things. Uh, a phone might be considered an e-learning tool. You've heard of telephone conferences where one instructor can be instructing many people through the uh, telephone. And there's these uh, telephone conference bridges. You've probably been on some of these conference calls yourself. And also there's the one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, which is extremely effective. And online forums are extremely popular. I'm participating in one now uh, about e-learning. And it's a tremendous way to uh, learn more. Uh, uh, those who are learning can share information with each other. And also educators can uh, deliver a course in full or in part to their students through an online, online forum. That's one additional type of e-learning. And of course printed material has been around for a long time and it'll continue to be here for quite some time. Although a lot of printed material now is being replaced by electronic versions of that. Uh, typically they're in these PDF files, portable document format files. And uh, those are often included as part of a total package of an e-learning course. And, of course, there's the webinars. You may have been on some of those. It's a web seminar where one or two instructors uh, can lead one to a thousand or more students all over the world. It's tremendously effective. Now, let's take a look at learning again from another angle here. We have the traditional method of uh, uh, someone studying a book and it's like the information from the book is being transferred from the book into the person's head. And that's fine and that's still going to be here for quite some time, although the books are more uh, things that are readable from your computer instead of um, readable from a physical object. And another form of the whole learning picture, now we're getting back into the e-learning again, is audio. Um, you've probably heard a lot of um, audio recordings that are used to educate people, and those have been around for quite a while, and there's also guided meditations on audio. I uh, do a lot of those myself, and uh, that's one additional or one form of e-learning. Uh, and then we get back to the printed text again, or text in either a web page or blog page or uh, some kind of a book format, possibly an ebook. That can be part of e-learning. And there's video. Also, you're watching a video now, and it has audio with it. And that's a very effective part of e-learning. And also, quiz. Uh, you can have an e-learning quiz that gets people um, involved. It does a few things. One is it helps people know how much they know. It helps them um, learn what they need to learn. You know, basically the same idea. 
And a quiz can be very engaging. It gets a student involved in things. Like a quiz can also be used as a form of marketing. In fact, e-learning can be used as a form of marketing. We're educating a prospective customer about the benefits of what we have to offer. And each one of these items on the screen here, including the book above this guy's head, is a learning object. The audio is a learning object, video, text, quiz are all learning objects. And what we can also have is two or more objects can combine to make a larger object. In this case, the audio and the video are a part of one learning object. That's actually what you're experiencing right now. It has audio and video. And that is an object, a learning object. Now, all of these things can be combined together to another type of learning object um, or a learning object encompassing these other objects. And what it can be called is a shareable content object. Content refers to the subject matter itself, what is being learned or what's being displayed or the method of delivery such as audio or video and so forth. Now what do I mean by shareable? Shareable means something we cre create for one course can be used in a different course or it can be moved to another location. So we have a shareable content object and we'll be hearing a lot more about these. Okay, now let's say a course has a whole lot of shareable content objects. So they might have audios, videos, printed materials, and so forth. And they're all together. And when we combine these things in a certain way by our own design, what we have is an e-learning course. And we're the ones who define the structure. Whoever's creating the course defines the structure of this e-learning course. That includes the various flows from one item of learning to the next. And it seems we should have some sort of a standard for this package. And sure enough, we do. Uh, this whole standard is called a Shareable Content Object Reference Manual. So we talked about Shareable Content Object. That's the first three words in there and there's all these shareable content objects in this package. Now what do we mean by a reference model? A reference model is a agreed upon standard of a way of packaging different learning objects together so that they can be reused over and over again in different systems, different learning systems. And uh, this is not the only standard, this SCORM, Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It's not the only standard, but it's um, uh, one of the most popular ones. Now, everything has to have an acronym. So you can guess what the acronym for a Shareable Content Object Reference Model is. It's called SCORM, S-C-O-R-M. And if you hang around, around the world of e-learning, very long, you're going to be encountering this word SCORM. So now you know what it is. Okay, so you have your course put together now. Now what do you do? You want to publish your courses. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, one way is you can burn them to a CD, compact disc, and distribute, distribute those throughout your corporation if you're working in a corporation or you can email them to people. And uh, so that's one way of getting things out in the world. The most popular way nowadays is through the web or a corporate intranet. And those can be presented in different ways. One is the regular way with just web pages. And that's extremely popular. I reach people all over the world with that. And that works on the web. Or you can just work inside of your company on the company intranet. And something very powerful and new, which can include all of the regular website features, 
is a learning management system. Now that's a whole subject in itself, so we won't get too much into that right now, but I'll give you some of the highlights right now. A uh, learning management system can present the information to your students, but it can also help them enroll. It can um, uh, track the results of quizzes that the um, students take and report those results to the teacher. And the teacher can often get those in summary form. And um, uh, so a learning management system is very popular, and uh, that's a whole different subject, so we won't get too much into that here. Now let's take a look at um, a course from a very basic standpoint. We start with a development tool to create the course. And then we want to get the course out into the world, so we have a learning management system. So a development tool and a learning management system combine together to create a course. Now these tools that we're talking about, the development tools and the learning management system come from vendors. So you're here on the left and then you want to get your work out into the world and there's a vendor and some vendors are better than others. Now we have to go exploring for a vendor for both these learning management tools, a learning management system, and the course creation tools. So we just kind of look and on the surface of things, a vendor can look really tremendous. We look at their website and it's beautiful and they have all these um, glowing testimonials on there and there's uh, things moving around on the screen in an artistic manner and it's all great. We read reviews of these various tools and what we tend to overlook is that these um, these different reviews were written by often by someone who just downloaded the software a couple hours ago. He uh, spent a couple hours with it and then writes a review and his review includes a lot of what the vendor claimed about the course. So we don't always know how this is gonna, going to play out. So we need some way around this. And you see what this particular vendor has on its mind. There's that cage there. In other words, we can get locked into that vendor. It's called vendor lock-in. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's get back to our development tools and the course itself. And, and the learning management system used to prevent that, to present that course to the world. And what we want to do is use standard-based tools. And there's a reason to use these standards-based tools. What that does is give us the ability to switch vendors. We're not necessarily stuck with one vendor. If we have something in this standard format, like the SCORM format that we talked about, then we can switch vendors. So let's kind of wrap it up here. Uh, we've talked about how e-learning fits into the big picture, what it is, and how it gets you uh, from where you are to where you want to be, and the advantages of standard-based tools. And Essentially, we're, we're just about done here. Let's do a real wrap-up now. My name is Jim Kitzmiller, and I want to thank you very, very much for watching this video. My self-help blog is at jimkitzmiller.net, and uh, there's an e-learning blog of the way I put these e-learning courses together, and that's at elearning.jimkitzmiller.net. And you're welcome to visit those. And please feel free to email me if you have any questions. There's my email address there, jimkits at gmail.com. So again, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate it.